This is the GoPro Hero 8, but is it really worth it? The price tag of $399 or €329? Euros? Let's check it out. Hello, I'm Enrique and welcome to my channel. Just for disclosure, I buy the GoPro myself, nobody sent it to me, so I'm going to tell you my honest opinion. The new design of the GoPro Hero 8 is slimmer and you also don't need to use an external frame or cage to mount all your GoPro accessories to it. This is doable thanks to the two small foldable fingers underneath the frame of the camera. It's a good thing because you don't need to carry this extra frame with you but also they are a little bit flimsy, so in a certain situation they can get broken and you need to replace them. Another thing that I don't like about the new design and I don't understand why GoPro did it this way is that you cannot anymore change the lens uh, cover from the camera. You cannot take it out, you cannot change it and GoPro doesn't offer a repair service for it. They do offer is a lens and screen uh, tempered glass protection film that you could put on the camera. I don't know if they make this because of getting more sales, a little bit extra accessories for the camera, but I don't find it like a really good move. It has a battery life of around 50 minutes, which is not so great, but maybe you can use it for a one day completely. I would still recommend to buy a battery pack or a power bank to have with you. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Hypersmooth 2.0, or what GoPro likes to call the gimbal killer. I believe it's great. <laughs> I really like it. I use it a lot. You have four modes for it. Off, on, high and boost. Mostly I film my videos in the linear mode so you don't see so much of a crop. But if you use the, the, the wide angle or super view angle of the camera, you have to think about the crop that it's going to have when you use the stabilization built in. To test it, I'm going to put you here in the video a side-by-side -side comparison about it. I strapped the camera on the side of my car and I went for a drive. I don't see this as a gimbal killer, but it's a really, really good addition to have with the camera. If you want to go uh, mountain biking, if you want to, like I did in the test, to strap it into the car, or also for blogging, it's really good to keep it stable. Something else that I really like about the camera is the Time Wrap 2.0 and the automatic speed mode. It's really, really great if you want to do some time lapses with the camera because depending on the movement and the light and the speed, this adjusts how the video is made. And you can also tap in the screen behind the camera to go back to normal speed filming, what can make you some really, really, really cool effects. Copros in this new design improve the microphone and put one microphone right in front of the camera, which really helps into video making, especially if you want to use the camera as a vlogging camera. Let's hear the difference, okay? This is what I sound. This is what I sound with my Canon M50 with the Rode microphone on top. And this is what I sound like with the GoPro Hero 8 built-in microphone. What do you guys think? Sounds pretty good for what it is, isn't it? But you want to see what you can do with this camera? Take a look at this. I have three things that I would like the GoPro address for the new model. Number one, this one is not so rugged as the other models. I don't know how long, how many impacts this camera is going to take. Number two, the camera gets really, really, really hot after long uses. In a weather like here in Germany in winter, it's not a problem, but if you are in holidays someplace like Dubai, where it's 50 degrees outside, I think the camera will overheat and you are going to have problems with your videos. And number three, 
that is extremely slow. The navigation through the menus is really slow, sometimes to power it on or to power it off, it's really slow. And in 2020 that we are right now, this is something that I don't find acceptable, that I don't find acceptable anymore. Is it worth it to buy? It depends. If you already have the GoPro Hero 7 or 6, and you don't really care about these new features because they're already pretty good cameras, no, don't buy it. If you want to make films and to be your only camera to make films or stuff like this, I will also not recommend it. If you are a filmmaker and you want to have a second camera, yes, buy it. Because with the size and all the functions that this have, it will be a really good addition for you. If you are a blogger, yes, you can really, really good blog with this camera. So in fact, I'm going to make a whole video about how you can blog with the GoPro Hero 8 Black and the setup that I used to blog. And if you only want one camera to go on holidays with the family, to have fun with your friends, to shoot all these action scenes with your bike, somewhere in the water because it's waterproof, anywhere, yeah, it is. I hope you enjoyed the review of the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Thank you very much for watching and thank you to my sponsor, me, because I pay for the camera. But anyway, if you work by GoPro and you want to send me a check, you can contact me. But with all seriousness, click the like button if you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. This will really help me grow and bring you guys more videos like this one. Thanks for watching again and bye bye.